It's a Team Eros, yeah, it's one of the Minimax line. What's the difference between the uh, Minimax and the Eros uh, Well, all of the Team mid-wing airplanes are Minimaxes. Uh, they have the 103, then they have the Z-Max, uh, the V-Max, and this is the one they call the Eros. Now, the difference that I noticed, the first difference that I noticed is that this is not powered by a little 277. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a 503 Rotex. It cruises around 70 miles an hour. Uh, it gets off the ground in about 150 feet. Um, I built it for my own personal little cruise airplane, and uh, I put strut fairings on it. That picked me up about an extra five miles an hour cruise speed. It's just a joy to fly. It's a lot of fun. Now, when a, a team kit comes to you, uh, what kind of, I mean, special tools or uh, facilities do you need to actually get the airplane kit? Um, there's really no specialty tools. Uh, what would help is if you had a table saw, because uh, when you build your front spar, you have to cut a little bit of a taper on top of the spar. So that helps with a table saw, so you can tilt your blade and, and run it through the table saw. But that really, you could have a friend do that on their saw if you didn't have a table saw. Everything else can pretty much be done with a little hand jigsaw and a round sanding disc, uh, that helps, a sanding disc, but all the wood is pre-cut to the right dimensions. You just get the sticks and you have to cut them off in the right angles and, and sand them to fit. Now, when the kit uh, is, is first delivered, how does it uh, come, like, a, uh, is it a, a kit that, with all of the parts actually made for you and then you have to just sort of, as you say, finish them off? Or is it something where there's a lot of raw materials that you have to actually work with? Well, it, it's a lot of uh, raw materials. All the wood is pre-cut to size. Um, all you have to do is cut it to the to proper length. The nuts and bolts are all pre-packed in packages. Um, the landing gear, this particular landing gear, you can get two different configurations. This is the steel split landing gear. Uh, it comes all pre-welded. Um, uh, if, if there's an option on the linkage for the canopy, uh, the the linkages or the L brackets to hold the stabilizer on and the other little brackets that come in a pre-made kit for an extra cost. Or they send you the raw material and you can cut it and make your own aluminum pieces. Uh, if, if you've got a, a bandsaw and the grinding equipment to make your own little pieces, it's fun to do. I enjoy doing it. But if you're the type of person that don't have that equipment, you might spend the extra money and buy the pre-made kit that beautifully anodized and it, it, it's, it's real nice equipment. Now what would be the hardest part of the airplane to actually build it? Uh, like, well, for example, I built a couple of kit boxes and the wing is on the kit box is probably the hardest part. Of probably the most time consuming. There's nothing hard about it. it just uh, it, It's the most time consuming. Uh, you can build a rib, one rib in the morning, take it out of the jig that evening, build a second rib and then the next morning take it out and do it again and there's 24 ribs so you can feasibly do it in two to three weeks you can build the 24 ribs for the wing and while you're waiting for your glue to dry on your ribs you can be building your spars. Now what about the instructions for building them? Uh, Eaton's been in their business for a number of years now have they got their instructions down so that they're basically follow from uh, step A to Z? Exactly and they've even got a checklist uh, every every step of the way if, if you've done it, you can check it off, and, and if you have a problem, all you have to do is call team and say, I'm on page so-and-so, I'm working on number C, and can you explain that to me? And they, could tell, they grab a blueprint, open it up, and they know right where you're at, and they can explain it to you over the phone in a very short time. Now, you mentioned blueprints. There are actually blueprints supplied uh, with the airplane now? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, you can scratch build the airplane if, if you have the talent or want to do that. You can just buy the blueprints and scratch build it. They'll supply you with any of the parts that you need that you don't want to scratch build, like the wingtips, the cowling, the, the canopy little hat, the fiberglass parts that you can't make. Uh, they, they'll sell you any part you want for it. Now, this one being the Eros, how many hours did it actually take you to, to build it from when you started until you finished? Okay, I've been a team dealer for almost nine years now, and I've built a number of these and helped customers. 
I built this airplane in approximately five months, from start to finish, and uh, but I have a lot of experience at it. My first airplane, because I've had a lot of model airplane experience, helped me in building my first first team Mini Max, and I built that airplane in six months, uh, about 300 to 350 hours. Now you mentioned uh, model builders. This is a wood airplane, then. Is it like building one of those little balsam model planes? Very similar. I mean, it's just a bigger and different, you know, different wood. We're used to using balsa wood on the models. This wood is all clear white pine, and but the building technique is basically the same. You build it flat on a table, and you glue all the parts together, just like building a big model airplane. Now, the difference, uh, we've got an engine, a 503 engine on this airplane. Is there also a difference in the structure of this airplane compared to the main Max in order to, uh, to hold the 503? Yeah, sure. And the 503, the, the, the Eros model, which this is, uh, since it, it has the 503 Rotex, it's 52 horsepower, the airplane has the VMAX spars. They're, uh, I believe they're 6.2 or 6.4 positive G's rating on the front spar, and that's positive, and it's 4.2 negative, I believe. So it has a heavier set of spars in it because it's a faster engine. The, the 103 model that has the 277 Rotax motor in it, the spars aren't so heavy because it doesn't have the load that this airplane does. Now, are there any design changes that you've done to the airplane from uh, what team uh, would have actually put out to make this airplane? No, produce? there's been little things we've stumbled across over the years, um, and, and team has now picked up on that and made some little changes. But, uh, for instance, where the trailing edge glues onto the uh, back of the wing, uh, when you tightened your fabric up, it would pull so hard from time to time it would break the glue joints. So now we put cut little triangle squares to put underneath there to help strengthen the trailing edge. And team has now made note of that and added that in their blueprints. So just little things like that that we picked up. But no, the airplane is built just like the blueprints say. I wouldn't change a thing. Um, we've got an airplane up here and, and flying now, and you've, you've given us some uh, performance on it. But what kind of money would you actually have in an airplane such as this? when it is ready to fly. If you want to stay bare bones and not make it very fancy, you can build this for $7,500, $7,500 to $8,000. Now I put wing tips, wheel pants, some lights on it, and some, some nice things, and I probably got close to 10,000 in this airplane. If somebody wanted to get a little more information on the airplane, is there a name and a number and address where somebody can get a hold of you? Of course, they can, they can get a hold of Team Aircraft.